Okay, hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, time now is 7.31 p.m. So uh, we shall not delay further for those, uh, so it's not to short change those who are punctual and are tuning in to this uh, third uh, series. Um, so this is our March series of the Uncovering Singapore and Hong Kong Stock Market Performance. All right, so this is the uh, March series. We have done January and February as well, and now March. So I hope that you guys are enjoying this uh, sort of uh, monthly recap that I'm sharing. And also for this time around um, in March, it is a, a crazy month uh, for all the markets, Singapore, Hong Kong, and US markets. Uh, so there's a lot to cover. Um, and just, just a very quick introduction first. So my name is Marcus and thank you for joining us today. I am from the uh, French Bank, Society Generale. We are the product issuer of the daily leverage certificates that are listed on Exchange Securities Market. And it offers exposure to both Singapore and Hong Kong uh, indices as well as single stocks. Therefore, we are doing, making use of this series to share a bit of you know, the market highlights in the Singapore and Hong Kong stock market uh, on a monthly basis, as well as um, to give you guys a quick introduction of uh, what the daily leverage certificates or DLCs are, are for short, how does it work? And what are some of the things that you should uh, note or should take note of if you are looking to trade the DLCs? All right, so in this uh, short one hour session, I will cover a bit of the Singapore market recap followed by the Hong Kong market recap. And then the lastly, I will take the last remaining session, uh, part of the, of the session to cover, to give you guys a quick introduction on the daily leverage certificates and how you can use it for your short-term trading needs. All right, so um, very important first disclaimer, please note that you know, nothing here is considered a recommendation or an offer for you to buy or sell any of the securities or the DLCs. Past performance is, does not indicate future performance. All right, and so please do note that uh, whatever that is mentioned here is not any recommendation. Okay, so let's go right into the Singapore stock market in March. All right, so in the Simsky index, for example, you can see here, uh, the in Singapore index had a V-shape uh, sort of bounce, similar to quite a lot of the other uh, markets that we saw. Um, it was a very sharp V-shape, and, and this V-shape, um, the, the drop was largely uh, as a result of news of Russia's invasion of Ukraine um, and also dominated the headlines, um, the causing the Simsky index, the MSCI Singapore index to drop below its 330 level. This red line you can see over here, it, it, it dropped below that level and went all the way down to the near, close to the 300 uh, point level uh, on this MSCI Singapore index before making a very sharp uh, sort of V-shaped recovery um, going back up to the 330 level, previously where it broke down, all right? This is all within a span of one month. Uh, so definitely it has been a very exciting uh, time, uh, March uh, in 2022, all right? While at the V-shaped recovery was a string of positive developments uh, in the macro environment. So not so much about Singapore itself, but more of the macro environment. The, the progress in the peace talks with Russia and Ukraine, China's pledge to support the market, which I'll touch on later as well and did more clarity on the US monetary policy after the Fed started the first rate hike in their March, in their March FOMC meeting, right? So this led the swift, the swift V-shaped recovery that we saw um, in the second half of March. And now, right now, Simsky is closing back above the 330 level. So as of 28 March, it closed at 331 points, uh, 0.6 points, all right? So it is sitting above its 20-day and its 50-day moving average. Uh, judging from the lines you can see here. Sorry, the 50-day moving average is at the 334 level. So it is just sitting below the 50-day moving average. It's above the 20, but below the 50. All right, so this is the V-shaped recovery on the MSCI Singapore Index in March. All right, and I think the highlight in, in March itself for the Singapore market, as most of you might know now, is the latest government relaxation of the COVID measures. So congrats to everyone. We are able to do groups of 10 now, and I'm sure you guys can also travel. So the main theme in, in March for the local Singapore market um, is definitely this relaxation of the COVID rules, uh, COVID measures. Um, we definitely saw um, a, a lot of uh, news about, you know, uh, brokers sort of uh, calls also on the travel and leisure related teams, um, you know, mobility teams, so we, will, we have actually seen some of this uh, in the uh, top gainers and losers uh, within the March month to date, uh, which is as of 28 March. Uh, so in top gainers, you can see Roma, City Developments, 
ST Engineering, uh, UOB as well as Singapore Airlines. Uh, in the top losers, in fact, most of the, the stocks uh, in the Singapore uh, sort of blue chip names have all uh, gained uh, or at least posted green uh, rather than closed in the red uh, as of 28 March for the month. Um, the only rate you see here is seen limited, which is part of the MSCI Singapore index, right? Taking a part, it takes a huge weightage. It takes 16% of the MSCI, MSCI Singapore index. Uh, so definitely this has a bit of a drag on the MSCI Singapore index, All right? So some of the top gainers, you see that Wilma. Wilma has been riding on the commodity sort of uh, cycle, the current commodity cycle, the, uh, the, the rise up, run up in the commodity prices. So Wilma has benefited from it to a certain extent and its share price shows that uh, it is up 11% month to date. And after its uh, earnings release in Feb or end of February, um, most of the brokers, uh, I'm not sure, I mean, all of the brokers kept their, their buy calls for Wilma. Uh, so DBS, Maybank, UBK, and RHB have all kept their buy calls for Wilma. Uh, with price targets of six dollars and sixty seven cents, six fifty six, six five fifty, and five thirty respectively. So Wilma is uh, benefiting from the uh, current commodity cycle, um, and also you know you can, and also you have seen uh, if you can look at the uh, fund flows on the uh, Singapore uh, institutional versus retail that SJX publishes on a weekly basis, you will have seen that the institutional have uh, uh, institutions have been buying the Wilma stock in the past three or four weeks. Uh, that's, that's also leading it to its, uh, its run up in its prices um, with an 11% gain month to date. All right, CD development is the second top gainer. It, is, it also um, posted its results uh, in end of February. And after its uh, results, I, uh, it, it showed that it, it uh, sort of recorded, uh, it made a record home sales in 2021 despite all the uncertainties uh, behind the COVID-19 pandemic. So that's quite remarkable for this property developer. And, you know, um, the city development also announced uh, quite a big uh, corporate action. It will be distributing its uh, city development uh, hospitality trust units to existing city de development shareholders uh, to reward, invest reward their shareholders. Uh, so this distribution is coming up. Uh, they, are, uh, they have proposed it. Um, and it's subject to their shareholders' approval. Uh, so this is something that CD development shareholders should look out for. All right. And also SIA. SIA is definitely one of the uh, top gainers in uh, the month of March due to the relaxation uh, of the COVID measures. Right. It is up 8.1% month to date as of 28 March. So several of the brokers have uh, made their, their sort of uh, recommendations and also shared their opinion that the SIA is likely to benefit from the relaxation of the travel protocols. So all fully vaccinated travelers to Singapore will be allowed to enter the country without quarantine from 1st April. And the daily cap of 15,000 travelers under the VTL uh, will also be removed. So that's very good news for the SIA. It is, uh, has been up 6.4% in the past five days. So definitely there was a very post uh, uh, relaxation rules announcement uh, run up uh, on the SIA shares, all right? Okay, and this Singapore travel-related stocks, um, besides SIA, there are also uh, many others that have been uh, in the head, making the headlines uh, in terms of how they will benefit from the uh, reopening. So a mobility place consists of sets, uh, which is, 10, is up 10.3% month to date. It is not in this list because it is not a constituent of the MSCI Singapore Index. It is a constituent of the STI Index. Uh, instead, um, Singapore Airlines and Comfort Degro are also all these uh, mobility plays that you can uh, touch on to play to ride on the reopening team. All right. And also, um, there are the leisure and travel related uh, plays such as the uh, Thai beverage, which is up 6% month to date, and also Genting Singapore, which is up 7% month to date. So, we did see quite a bit of uh, increase in flows on the daily leverage certificates, the DLCs, the long DLCs on the SIA, on Genting, on Thai Beverage, and Comfort Degro as well. Uh, we saw increase in flows in them uh, post the announce, post the, uh, the, the relaxation measures announcement. Uh, so definitely um, there has been, has been quite a bit of increase in activity on these names, all right? In terms of the um, top losers, I wouldn't say top losers because they're still in the green over there, uh, but just that they, they marked uh, 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 smaller gains 
in the month of March compared to the likes of your SIA or your Roma, right? So looking at Venture Corp, um, it is uh, this, techno this manufacturing, tech manufacturing company. Um, analysts are still positive on Venture Corp's growth outlook. However, the current, you know, ship short, uh, the ongoing ship, chip shortage um, and component shortage in the, in the global markets uh, have been taken a drag on this venture stock. Um, it is up 1.1% month to date. All right. So, um, but the brokers are still positive on this stock. Uh, and they're positive that the uh, component shortages will likely to be eased in the second half of 2022. All right. Okay. So that's for the Singapore top gainers and top losers. Uh, we saw some of these translate into the DLCs. All right, so this is uh, just the top gains and losers uh, on the daily leverage certificates uh, tracking these underlying stocks. So these DLCs provide five times leverage, long or short, on the underlying stocks. And this is the immediate effect post the easing of COVID-19 measures announcement. We saw that the SIA was one of the, was the top gainer um, from this. Uh, it was up the, FA, the five times long SIA uh, DLC DTGW stock code was up 28% when the underlying was up 5.4%. CDDF as well, Comfort, uh, all posing double digit gains uh, because it does give that five times leverage on the underlying stock movement. So, you know, if you think that Singapore is, is stocks are boring to a certain extent, uh, you might want to consider the DLC speech could give you that enhanced return. Uh, you know, you can trade both sides of the market long and short as well. All right, so SIA, CDDF, Comfort, Venture, and Genting were some of the top gainers. Um, on the top loser sides of this, uh, naturally, it would be more of the short DLCs that uh, sort of uh, uh, decline in value because the short DLCs would uh, gain in value if the underlying stock drops, but the short DLC would decline in value if the underlying stock goes up, right? So that allows you to play both sides of the market. You either, you either buy long DLC or you buy the short DLC to be able to gain exposure, long or short exposure to these underlying stocks. Right, so respectively, the... Uh, venture, Genting, Comfort, CDVF, and SIA short DLCs uh, saw a decline in their DLC value uh, by double digits as well, corresponding to the underlying stock, corresponding to five times movement of the underlying stock movement. All right. So we saw an increase in flows on these two names over here, SIA, CDVF, Comfort, Venture, and Genting. Uh, we saw people taking long positions um, to write on this uh, reopening team uh, in the in the two days that, you know, in the immediate uh, effect uh, reaction in the market post the easing of the COVID-19 measures announcement. All right. So I think that's about the Singapore, Hall, Singapore market wrap. Um, the main idea is, I think the, the flavor right now is the reopening team. So today Comfort was up as well. SIA was up as well in the green. Uh, so it remains to be seen whether, you know, how long, how much more leaks can this uh, sort of reopening team run uh, before it is really priced into the market. Okay. So look out for these reopening teams, um, SIA, Comfort, Genting, and you can get an exposure to them through using the long DLCs or the short DLCs. Okay, moving on to the Hong Kong stock market. Uh, the Hong Kong stock market in March 2022 is uh, it's even more uh, exciting. Um, as, as you know, uh, it was taking a very deep dive in the first half of March because of multiple headwinds, not just the Russia-Ukraine crisis, but also China's knockdown over the COVID. Um, there are a lot of sparking growth concerns on China's economy uh, and also ongoing debt, property debt crisis and the property and tax sector uh, clampdown, regulatory clampdown, has ca caused the SIA to break below that support of uh, the 2300, 23,000 level. It broke fiercely below that level um, and went all the way down to almost 18,000 uh, points level uh, before we managed to see a very, very sharp uh, rebound over here. Uh, again, a V-shaped recovery, uh, although it did not recover back to the, to the level where it broke down. Um, so it shows you that the, the sort of Singapore market, the MSCI Singapore and probably the SDI as well, are a bit more resilient compared to the Hong Kong market, given that it did manage to rebound all the way back to where it broke down from, whereas Hong Kong market is still slightly below that level uh, where it broke down from. All right, the Hang Seng Index, is currently uh, as of 28 March, it is at the 21,685 points level. Uh, month to date, it is down 4.5% and year to date is down minus 7%, right? This is for the Hang Seng Index. So this V-shaped recovery, um, not sure if you guys might have 
seen the news, there was purely just one, or maybe not just one, but a few statements by the China uh, government to promise to actively introduce policies that benefit the markets, right? It was a sweeping statement by the Chinese government uh, that helped to, that led to this sharp recovery in the, in the Hang Seng Index. Uh, so this promise to actively introduce policies that benefit the markets, so far it has been um, verbal. Um, so far it has been what they say in terms of their statement. Uh, so we will have to see whether they actually, uh, what kind of uh, concrete steps that they will take to, to really uh, fulfill this promise of actively introdu introducing policies that benefit the markets, all right? So over here, um, this, this statement was, was, uh, was announced by the government. And so the Hong Kong Index uh, sharply rebounded all the way back to close to the 22,500 level uh, before it retreated in the uh, last few days and currently sits below the 22,000 level over here. All right, so we it's currently sitting above its 20-day uh, and its 10-day moving average. And it's still below its 50-day moving average of 23,000 level. So we definitely want to see Hang Seng Index move up back above the 23,000 level for it to be able to gain some momentum um, and see if it can uh, stage a rebound, a further rebound uh, on the Hang Seng Index. All right. And hopefully in the next quarter, in the coming quarter, we will be able to see how China will follow up with their pledge, uh, follow up to their pledge with concrete steps to stimulate the economy. So many of the analysts are expecting uh, sort of uh, more monetary, monetary policy easing. Uh, so this will be in contrast to how uh, the, the Fed side, the Federal Reserve, where they actually did their first uh, rate hike uh, in March. Uh, so they, 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 hiked their, their, they did their first hit rate hike in March, announced it in their FOMC meeting. And so China um, could be moving in opposite directions from the US market, where it will instead do more monetary easing uh, to be able to prop up the market in that sense. All right, so we might want to see how uh, China, China government plays it, whether they'll be very aggressive in their monetary easing or whether they're going to be uh, more moderate kind of easing. Because if they ease too much and US hikes a lot, uh, there could be a lot of complications that they have to be uh, cognizant of. All right, so we'll look out for, in this coming quarter, look out for news from the China government on what they're going to do to help to stimulate the economy and uh, what kind of policies they'll introduce. Okay, and meanwhile, uh, while Singapore wrapped up its earnings season in, uh, in February and uh, right now on the Hong Kong market side, they just, uh, the ongoing, uh, it is uh, currently ongoing their earnings season right now. So quite a big, quite a few big names have uh, announced their results, therefore making it an even more exciting March month uh, so far. So Tencent, um, the biggest stock in the, in the Hang Seng Index uh, by market cap, uh, Tencent posted its slowest ever sales rise. Revenue grew by just 88% in the fourth quarter, the slowest pace since it went public in 2004. Right, so we know that China had frozen the game approval since August last year and curtailed quite the, the gaming time for, for those that are under 18 years old. Uh, those were part of Beijing's efforts to strengthen the uh, the control over its society and industry, including technology, after years of you know um, sort of uh, exponential growth, so that has an impact on all these tech companies. And Tencent, being the largest one of them, uh, has seen that its its uh, its sort of fundamentals are being affected by these uh, policies that have been introduced by the China government. All right, so Tencent stock um, is was the, one of the largest, uh, one of those that reported their earnings recently. Okay, and then Alibaba, Alibaba reported their earnings last month in February. Um, so nothing much from them this month, but we saw that Alibaba announced that it, it raised its share buyback plan uh, program to 25 billion, the largest ever repurchase spend by the uh, e-commerce giant. So that's uh, some big news on the Alibaba front. And Alibaba was also the top, one of the top performers uh, in the month of March, right? You see over here, it is on the fifth place over here with a 6.6% month-to-date gain, all right? And among the other uh, top gainers, some of the uh, infrastructure plays made it to the top gainers. You have the CK infrastructure as well as the CK asset holdings. Um, these are up uh, 8.9 and 7.7% month-to-date respectively. 
All right. So some of these infrastructure plays, um, you know, the uh, they it could be a, a rotation back into some of the this kind of value plays, um, and they are uh, one of amongst the top gainers in the Hang Seng Index in the March, right? So CK Asset, which is Hong, Hong Kong's second uh, biggest developer by value, posted better than expected earnings uh, in twenty twenty one. So they reported in March as well. So its bottom line jumped um, 30.5% to 21.2 Hong Kong dollar, uh, 21.2 billion Hong Kong dollars. Uh, so that was uh, uh, better than expected earnings, uh, better than the analyst expectations. So we also saw a jump in their price, in their performance uh, this month. All right. Um, CNOC is one of the top gainers. And that one is no surprise given that oil prices have been uh, rising dramatically. Although today we saw a bit of a decline, uh, correction, but in the month of March, I think the oil prices, given that oil have been oil prices have been going up uh, a lot, uh, CNOC, uh, which is uh, the China sort of state-owned um, oil company, uh, benefited from it as well. Another one would be Petro China as well. Uh, that is among one of the underlying assets for the DLCs. Uh, these oil companies are also registering a month-to-date gain, uh, a respectable month-to-date gain, and among the top gainers as well. All right, and um, Meituan, Meituan was the biggest, um, I would say the most blockbuster earnings results release, uh, making multiple headlines across the board uh, because it made the most headlines because uh, Meituan's fourth quarter re revenue rose 31% from a year earlier on the back of significant business sales and stable food delivery growth. So this outperformed um, most of the other Chinese, the, the Chinese uh, sort of tech companies that have been hit by the government crackdown uh, in the last year or so. So definitely, uh, Meituan outperformed its peers. And with that, the market also helped it to rally. Um, in terms of Meituan, I can't really can't recall how much is it up month to date. Uh, but definitely, Meituan, in the last two days, we have seen Meituan uh, uh, share price um, increasing as well, consecutive sessions of increase of, of price gains in the last few days. Um, post the earnings uh, sort of results. Okay, and also on the Meituan DLCs, we saw um, quite a few, quite a quite a uh, increase in terms of the inflows into the Meituan long DLCs, uh, showing that you know people are, are taking a more bullish or more optimistic approach uh, to this uh, Meituan stock that has been battered down the whole of last year. <clears throat> okay, and JD.com, JD also reported higher four quarter fourth quarter earnings that beat analyst estimates, but however, revenue growth slowed and uh, expenses widened uh, for JD.com. Um, so making it, it, it does ended up in one of the top losers in the month of March to date, month of March, month to date. Um, it was down 19.5% month to date um, as of 28 March, all right? So that's JD.com. And Sunny Optical, okay, Sunny Optical, the, the handset sort of sector has um, taken, have been quite weak. Uh, on the, in terms of the handset related uh, stocks. Uh, so Sunny Optical, uh, I mean, that was on the back of all the chip shortages and also the handset weakness. Uh, so Sunny Optical, they reported net income for the full year that missed earnings um, due to their sectorial weakness, uh, the handset uh, smartphone uh, sort of sector. Uh, they reported full year earnings that missed the average and this estimates. Uh, on the back of weaker smartphone consumption sentiment, plus also a prolonged chip shortage uh, issue, right? So its share price is down minus 33.1% month to date. Um, other handset related stocks like Xiaomi and BYD Electronic on the Hong Kong uh, exchange have also seen a drag on their share price um, despite the post-China uh, economic pledge boost that we saw uh, in the second half of March, right? So if you look at their share prices, you will notice that they are, they, you don't really see a V-shape in that sense. Uh, they managed to recover a bit, a bit from the post of, uh, from the post pledge announcement of the Chinese government to to help uh, introduce policies to stimulate the economy. Uh, but for these smartphone related companies like BYD Electronics, uh, Xiaomi, Sunny Optical, you will see that their share price did not have such a big bounce as opposed to like stocks like your Alibaba or Tencent or even Meituan. Okay. All right, so that is the quick recap on the top five gainers and losers in the Hong Kong market. I better hurry up a bit. Um, and on the DLC front, the daily leverage certificates, the five times long DLCs on the uh, some of these pharmaceutical names, 
um, you would see that the uh, Wusi Bio and Sino Bio, these are the pharmaceutical names, they were among the top gainers and uh, uh, in top gainers uh, on, the, on the DLC fronts um, post the China Economic Pledge, which measures just the week after China announced, uh, sort of made their, their pledge to support the economy uh, uh, on 16th of March. Um, so this was post that. Uh, one week after that, we looked at what are the top gainers and the top losers. Wusi Bio and Sino Bio, these pharmaceutical companies, uh, saw the biggest gains. Wusi Bio was up 35% uh, in that period of about eight trading days post the announcement. Uh, so the DLC with that five times leverage, it was up by about 158%. All right. And the Galaxy, uh, besides the pharmaceutical names, we also saw uh, the entertainment uh, casino stocks, Galaxy Entertainment, the DLC on it five times long, uh, DLBW, was up by about 100%. Uh, on the back of Galaxy being up about 17%. All right. Alibaba, similarly, meaning in the top five, it is uh, the five times long Alibaba DLC DVIW is up about 71% uh, in that eight trading day period. Sinoc as well, up 64%, the long DLC DMFW. And also correspondingly, the short DLCs uh, decline in value because the underlying stocks all rallied uh, post the China economic pledge. And also on the short side, um, you could see the respective will also register. Similarly, I, you can see that the uh, Galaxy, for example, five times short Galaxy DLC was down by 65% over here. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that is the top gainers and losers on the uh, Hong Kong stock DLCs. Um, so we saw quite a bit of inflow into the large cap names on the DLCs. We saw people buying the uh, increase in terms of people buying the five times long Alibaba DLC, the Tencent, five times long Alibaba uh, Tencent DLCs, as well as the five times long Meituan DLCs, right? We saw quite a bit of inflows into that. So that is the Hong Kong market sort of recap on the performance. I think upcoming, we are still not uh, finished with the earnings season yet. Um, today, there will be the announcement uh, earnings results by BYD company um, that uh, the vehicle, electric vehicle slash normal vehicle, uh, diesel vehicle companies. Uh, BYD is one of the largest uh, car companies in, in, in China. So BYD company, uh, BYD Electronic, um, China Construction Bank, Great Wall, Moto, and Kuaishou are expected to announce the results today. Um, not sure if they announced it yet, but do look out for it if you're looking to trade them as well. Uh, I saw the headlines just now quite showed. I believe that they beat earnings uh, and list, uh, and list estimates for their earnings. So I think that's positive news. Um, do look out for their earnings. And then tomorrow we have Sinoc, uh, the, China, the oil company, Costco Shipping, Kanfeng Lithium, uh, Petro China. Uh, Petro China is on the 31st, right? So in this week, we have uh, these names coming up as well as Petro China, Sino Biopharma. Uh, and then in April, we have Hong Kong Exchange and Ping An. All right, so these are some of the earnings that you can look out for. Uh, for the uh, um, for their results, and you can also you know use the DLCs, five times long or short DLCs to gain exposure to these underlying stocks if you want to do if you want to make a play on the earnings results, earnings releases. All right. Okay, so that is the Hong Kong market. I think um, there's a hopefully there's a very quick recap for you guys. In the remaining 30 minutes or 20 minutes or so, um, I would like to very quickly just run through um, what are the DLCs, how does it work, and how can you use it to you know, um, trade some of these names that I've just uh, rattled on for the last half an hour on the Singapore stocks as well as the uh, Hong Kong stocks, right? So you can use the DLCs to gain exposure to them. So the DLCs, Daily Leverage Certificates, DLCs for short, they are listed and traded on the SGX securities market. So Society General, we are the first DLC issuer to list these DLCs on SGX securities market back in 2017. And since then, you know, we mark our fifth anniversary this year. So it has been uh, quite a uh, very fulfilling and, 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 and encouraging uh, journey so far in the last five years. We have seen, we've hit several milestones with the DLCs launching from index only DLCs to now single stock DLCs. And recently, we also launched the US, uh, some US DLCs uh, on the US equity indices, right? 
So we have come a long way, uh, five years now, going strong. Uh, so these DLCs are traded and listed on the Jack Securities market. Uh, us as the liquidity provider, we are the issuer. Uh, Society General is the issuer as well as the designated market maker for these DLCs, which means that we will provide liquidity throughout the trading day um, for you to be able to buy and sell these DLCs on SGX Securities Market through your regular stock brokerage account. So you can trade it through Tiger, for example. You can trade it through um, all the other brokers that uh, most of the re other retail brokerage uh, that offer that you use to trade your stocks, the Singapore stocks. You can use it to trade the DLCs as well, as long as you are SRT qualified. All right. So it, these DLCs, they offer a fixed daily leverage as you have, you could have sort of guessed just now from the top gainers and losers which I showed on the DLCs on the Singapore and Hong Kong market just now. You could have roughly seen, okay, it does provide the leverage uh, five times or seven times. Right now we offer, and also it also has a daily long and a daily short DLC for you to take advantage of both sides of the market. Um, if you are bullish on the underlying stock, you will buy the daily long, the DLC, the long DLC. If you are bearish on the underlying stock, you will buy the short DLC to go to capitalize on any correction in the stock price, all right? On the underlying stock price. So whether it is you are buying a, a long DLC or you are buying a short DLC, all right? You should not be short selling, you know, you should not be naked short any of the DLCs. You should always buy them, um, buy the long DLC or buy the short DLC, all right? And five times and seven times leverage, right? Coming right now for all the single stocks, we offer only five times leverage. Um, whereas for the index DLCs, the MSI Singapore Index, or the Hang Seng Index, or even the Hang Seng Tech Index, uh, which we have as well, um, you can uh, gain, uh, Hang Seng Tech Index is only five times leverage. But the Hang Seng Index or the Hang Seng China Enterprises Index, you can uh, gain either five times or seven, you can buy the five times DLC or the seven times DLCs for the indices, all right? I mentioned just now the DLCs, uh, are all linked to an underlying asset. So it does track the performance of the uh, underlying stock. So a 10 cent long DLC, 10 cent five times long DLC would track the underlying stock 10 cent share price uh, with that five times leverage provided. Okay, and this would be on a close to close basis on the daily performance on the underlying stock. So right now we have uh, quite a very wide range of, of stocks that you can choose from. Um, we have come a long way, as I mentioned just now, from starting off with, with uh, index DLCs on the MSI Singapore Index and the Hang Seng Index. We expanded to the single stock DLCs and just to mark our fifth anniversary this year, we are launching, uh, introducing DLCs on the US equity indices. So this will be the S&P 500 index DLCs. And we will also look to launch more on the NASDAQ DLCs and maybe even Russell 2000 in the, in the near future. Hopefully to launch DLCs on this. So these DLCs will offer you exposure to the uh, US market during agent hours. Uh, besides this, you also have uh, we have a wide range of Hong Kong stocks that you can choose from. We have the three indices, Hang Seng Index, Hang Seng China Balance Index, as well as Hang Seng Tech Index, and, um, and a wide range of, of, of uh, Hong Kong stocks. Uh, most of the large cap names are there, Tencent, Alibaba, Meituan, uh, BYD, um, and also some of the old economy stocks, China Merchant Bank, China Construction Bank, Ping An, uh, Petrol China, Sinoc. So um, there is quite a large range of Hong Kong stocks for you to choose from. And the, also, we also have uh, on the Singapore market, um, most of the you know, non-read blue chip names are there as well. We do have the DLCs on the Singapore banks, Singtel, Wilma, Capitaland, Taibev, Genting, Comfort as well. Uh, so we do list the five times DLCs on quite a wide range of single stock underlying for you to choose from. And back to the US uh, DLCs, this was just launched in early March, right? So we did, um, Introduce this, uh, it's a first, you know, we're the first time we're doing this uh, on the US indices. Um, so it is allows you to gain exposure to the US equity indices um, during agent hours. And you can trade it on the SGX securities market um, and it's traded in Singapore dollars. All right, so how does it work um, if, you know, the US market is closed during agent hours, but you are able to trade the US markets. Um, so this is because the, S&P 500 DLCs do track the e-mini futures uh, that's traded on CME um, that is traded during Asian hours. Um, but, you know, instead of uh, having to open a separate uh, margin account um, and worrying about the rolling of the futures and, you know, the contract size could be a lot bigger uh, by trading the CME futures directly on, on, uh, the, on the CME, uh, these DLCs offer you a more 
easy way to gain exposure to the S&P 500 index, very much here on SJ Securities market, three of regular stock brokerage account and in Sing Singapore dollars as well. All right, so this uh, S&P 500 DLCs will track the S&P 500 uh, markets um, during Asian hours. Uh, these are the DLCs over here, CYAW and CZEW. They have both the five times long and five times short DLCs for you to choose from. Okay, so you can uh, trade this here on SGX Securities Market um, during SGX Market Hours. Um, all right, and if you want to find out more, you can always visit our website, dlc.com uh, to find out more about these US DLCs or you could just give us a call. So maybe later I'll just show you guys the website, some screenshots of the website for you to see where you can find more information on these DLCs and also uh, where you can go to find more resources. Okay, and this is Tiger Brokers DLC promotion. So we launched the US uh, S&P 500 DLCs and we also partnered, uh, we also sort of partnered with uh, Tiger Brokers uh, to do this uh, promotion. So Tiger Brokers is um, doing this DLC promotion where you can get up to $150 worth of uh, rewards uh, when you trade any uh, sort of SGX listed DLCs with Tiger Brokers, all right? So get onto your Tiger platform look for the DLC stock code and you should be able to find this, um, uh, the DLCs on the Tiger platform to trade. Okay, this promotion is up to 30th June. Uh, so it's I think uh, 1st April up to, up to 30th June. Okay. And now going back to the DLCs, I think um, just to elaborate a bit about, you know, how the DLCs work, um, some of the basic principles. So as I mentioned just now, the DLCs are provide a five times leverage on a close to close basis uh, on the underlying daily performance, right? So you will take the daily underlying performance uh, times by the leverage factor to get the DLC performance. So in this very simple example here, um, if DBS goes up by 2%, uh, from its previous close, it goes up to $25.50 from its previous close of $25, for example. Um, that's a 2% gain. And then the five times long DLC will be up by times five, 10%, all right? So the, the five times long DBS DLC will be up by 10%. And correspondingly, you know, if you have bought the five times short DBS DLC, um, you will be down by 10%, right? Because the long DLC will gain in value when the underlying stock rises, while the short DLC would decline in value if the underlying stock rises, right? It will only gain in value if the underlying stock decreases. Okay, so your returns, uh, while it's magnified, uh, if you get the direction correct, but also if you get the direction wrong, the losses are magnified as well. So do take note that this is a short-term leverage trading instrument. Um, with a short, uh, So if you have a short-term view of the market, you, you can use these DLCs to, to um, sort of express your view and capture the returns. Uh, but definitely, please do not treat this as a buy and hold instrument. You should not be holding this for months at end. Uh, this is not an ETF or not a stock. It's not meant to be bought and hold for the, held for the long term. Um, generally, we see people training on an intraday basis or even uh, you know, for a day or two uh, or even up to maybe a week or, or one or two weeks. Uh, but definitely, um, we definitely do not recommend that you guys hold the DLCs for months at end. All right. Okay. So that is an example on the five times movement. So you can see over here in an example on our website, um, the, on this particular day, Tencent stock moved up by 1.54%. Uh, and correspondingly, the Tencent long DLC DIHW also moved up by uh, five, close to five times of that. It moves up to about nine, 10%. Um, on the five times long Tencent DLC DIHW over here. Okay, and correspondingly, uh, the Tencent short DLC, five times short DLC, DTCW, um, was down by uh, close to five times, uh, close down by 6% on the same day uh, because the Tencent stock was up, right? Tencent stock goes up, the short DLC will go down. But if Tencent stock instead goes down, then the short DLC will gain in value over there. Okay, so I mentioned just now that, you know, you can use the DLCs for short-term trading. We see some of them using it as a for intraday trading, uh, day trading. So some of the DLCs, they move quite a lot. Some of the Hong Kong stocks, they can move 5% or 7% a day. And times five of that, it's about 35% or 40%, uh, you know, movements on the DLC. So definitely there is a quite a large range of movement that is uh, quite trading, quite a large trading range for some of these day traders to be able to, you know, uh, make some uh, good returns. 
Okay, we see them trading on an intraday basis, day trading. We also see some people holding it for a few days or a week or two weeks uh, in terms of a swing trade. Um, so they think that they have a bit of a longer term view, uh, but not too long as to like, you know, uh, a few months kind of thing, but maybe a few weeks. Uh, so we see people, see people using it for the swing trading. And we also see uh, some of the uh, sort of investors using it to hedge their portfolios. So um, when investor, you say you have a big bag of uh, Tencent DLCs that you want to buy and hold for the long term. Uh, and, you know, but then you see that there could be a short term correction on the Tencent share price. Um, then you might want to use the five times short Tencent DLC to go to hedge some of your gains, you know, um, hedge your, your long term investment portfolio. So that when Tencent share price goes down or corrects indeed as you expected, you will be able to make some gains on the five times short Tencent DLCs. All right. In this example here, um, just on one half of the days last year, uh, this is an example of a day trading. So Meituan rose by 2.6% from uh, a short trading period of about one and a half hours. Right. So, and then the DZHW, the five times long Meituan uh, DLC, rose correspondingly by 14.5% from about 55 cents. Uh, it rose to about 63, 64 cents. Uh, that was about a 14.5% gain. Um, while, you know, Meituan rose 2.6% over there. Okay, so you can, uh, you know, use it for intraday trading. 14.5% uh, gain is quite a decent gain for uh, uh, intraday trade. Uh, so that DLC can help you to magnify your returns, but also take note, you know, your losses will be magnified as well. If Meituan had indeed, um, you know, declined by 2.6%, you will have made uh, close to similar uh, magnified losses. Okay, swing trading, um, you know, a period of uh, one month over here. So uh, this UAB stock was up by 9% last year in 25th Feb to 30th April. Um, it moved up 9% in a period of one month. All right, so this one, we saw that uh, the DDWW was up by 48%. Uh, from 25th Feb to 30th April in the same period, the same one month, uh, because it's, it will magnify that gain on the UOB, UOB stock uh, performance. So this period of one month, um, of course, we don't encourage you guys to hold for you know, um, too long. One month is pushing a bit, but please try not to hold this for the long term unless um, you are really have a very conviction. Um, because in the long term, you will never have a very strong conviction of where the share price uh, would be moving. Um, and with this, this leverage in play, you know, your potential gains and losses could be quite extreme. Um, so these are short-term trading instruments. And one month is probably, I would say, the, the max that you want to hold the DLCs. Usually, you want to hold it for only a few days or, uh, you know, try day, a few days, or maybe just a few weeks. Uh, but definitely not for months at end. All right. And some hedging example over here, you know, Tencent was down 24% uh, last year in July, for the month of July. Um, correspondingly, the, the Tencent short DLC DMIW was up by 209% in the same period over here. So you could, uh, you know, uh, hedge some of your, you know, losses on your long-term investment portfolio with the, the five times short Tencent DLCs or the five times short DLCs for, for in that case. Okay, so the, the DLCs is, is uh, one of the key selling points in terms of the DLCs is really the Hong Kong uh, stock market. Uh, we see its greatest value proposition in accessing the Hong Kong stocks um, because, you know, instead of changing your, your currency to Hong Kong dollars uh, and then uh, transact and then purchasing the stock itself on the Hong Kong exchange, where you are also subjected to the exchange fees and stamp duty, um, you can access these Hong Kong stocks uh, very much here on SJX listed securities market, SJX securities market, and you can access it through your, you know, uh, regular stock brokerage account. Uh, the DLCs are traded in Singapore dollars. Um, it has uh, a lot, minimum loss size of 100 certificate and you know you are paying exchange, exchange fees rather than the Hong Kong exchange fees. And the greatest proposition is mainly because you know for you guys right now, you can buy a 10 cent uh, stock. Uh, the minimum investment sum um, is around eight thousand uh, dollars, depending on the Hong Kong on 10 cent stock price because of the minimum lot size uh, on the Hong Kong stock exchange. BYD is even worse; it's even uh, a larger minimum investment sum. So some of you might, out there might not want to put at one go, put in $8,000 or $10,000 into one stock, just like that, right? But you do want to gain exposure to Tencent, the Tencent stock. 
Um, so you can do so using the uh, DLC if you have a short-term view of the Tencent stock. Um, and then the DLC is priced around $1. Um, so you can range from 20 cents up to $2, but roughly it's around $1 for most of uh, for the DLCs. And you can buy in increments of 100 units. So you can buy it for as little as $100, the Tencent long DLC. Um, but of course, you might not want to put in only $100 because you have to take into account your broker commissions. Uh, so, uh, but you can sort of make it into more bite-sized amounts. You can put in $1,000 or $2,000 as opposed to, you know, putting one lump sum of $8,000 into the Tencent um, uh, stock itself. That is, uh, we buy into the stock itself on Hong Kong exchange, right? So, and also, you know, it might even allow you to also um, average in a bit or, you know, spread your, your, your bullets into different tranches. If you want to, if you have $8,000 to, to get exposure to, to Tencent uh, stock and you have a horizon of maybe like uh, one or two weeks, you can, you know, every few days put in about $1,000 into the, into the uh, Hong Kong, into the Tencent DLCs and spread it out over a period of two to three weeks rather than, um, you know, putting it one lump sum into Hong Kong stock with $8,000 uh, on one day itself, all right? So definitely we see a lot of capital efficiency that you can use to trade the, um, to gain exposure to stocks using the DLCs. Uh, instead of having to put in a full $8,000, you can only put in, you need to put in maybe about one or $2,000. Um, to be able to gain exposure, to gain exposure to that amount, uh, to get the same exposure to the 10 cent stock, because don't forget that you have the five times leverage over there that's into, into the product. So if you put in $1,000, you buy the Tencent long DLC, you are in fact getting exposure to $5,000 worth of the Tencent stock because of that five times leverage that's provided in the product itself. But you're only using $1,000 as your capital to buy the long DLCs. Um, so there is that capital efficiency over there and uh, you can deploy your capital elsewhere to your long-term investment portfolio, for example. And this $1,000 that you put in, you know, that's where the um, exchange fees and the broker commissions are charged. So you are also saving on the uh, exchange fees and broker commissions by putting in that $1,000 instead of putting the full $5,000 into the stock itself. Okay, uh, but a few things you need to take note of when you're trading the Hong Kong underlying DLCs, um, the market making, um, the exchange, Hong Kong exchange hours is from 9.30 to 12 and 1 to 4 p.m. So we will not make markets, stock gen as the designated market maker will not make markets on the Hong Kong underlying DLCs outside of this Hong Kong uh, exchange trading hours. Um, so even though Singapore market opens at 9 a.m., between 9 to 9.30, we will not be making markets on the Hong Kong underlying DLCs. And from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., when the Singapore market is open but the Hong Kong market is closed, we will not, similarly, we will not make markets on the Hong Kong DLCs as well. Okay? And, you know, um, Hong Kong market, um, if the underlying stock is sort of suspended or, you know, halted, or if Hong Kong market has any um, public holiday or um, typhoon, for example, uh, we will not be able to make markets on the Hong Kong DLCs as well. Okay. And lastly, I wanted to just share the compounding effect returns. So this is um, something that is very important on the DLCs. So the five times leverage is on a close to close basis, right? If DB is up by 1% today, the five times long DLC will be, will give you the five times uh, that 5% gain, right? If DBS is down by 1%, then the short DLC will give you that. 5% gain, right? That's on a close to close basis. But more than a day, um, you have to take note that the gains and losses of the DLCs are locked in every day because that five times is on a close to close basis every day. And it's best to illustrate it over here with this example. Okay, so on day one itself, you can see that the underlying is up by 1%, day two is up by 2%, and on day three, it's up by another 2%. Overall, it's up about 5% over the three day period on the underlying stock, right? Whereas for the five times DLC, you can see every day it gives you that five times movement, 5%, 10%, 10%, but total and total, it gives you a 27% gain. That's more than five times that of the underlying stock. So, right? So five times five is 25, but over here you can see a 27% gain. Where did the extra 2% gain come from, right? So that is the compounding effect of DLC. You know, the leverage could um, uh, vary from five times. Um, so it works for you in a strong trending market like this. Um, if the stock is up every day, 1%, 2%, 2%, you will be able to get uh, enhanced leverage uh, because every day your gains are locked in. Over here, $2.63, the gain of $0.13 cents is locked in already. And then the next day, that 10% is based off the higher base, 2.63%, $2.63 over here. So every day the gains are locked in and therefore compounding effect um, 
over time, you know, you could get the enhanced return if you're in a strong trending market, right? But this compounding effect will not work for you if you're in a very volatile uh, market condition, right? In this example over here on the right, if the stock is up by 2%, down by 4%, and then back up to, you know, where it was up by 7% to register a 5% gain overall over the last three days, right? Whereas for the five times long DLC, you know, every day it gives you that five times movement, right? 2%, 10%. Minus 4%, minus 20%, plus 7%, plus 37%, right? But overall, over the three days, it's only up by 20%. Okay, so that is less than the 5% times 5, 25% expected performance. I mean, you would expect uh, the five times performance uh, on the underlying stock, right? So instead of 25% over here, you're only, the DLC only returned 20%. Um, over the last three, over these three trading days. Okay, so this will not, the deals will not work as well in a, in a volatile market or a sideways moving market. Um, so you have to take note that the leverage factor will vary across um, more than a tra one trading day. The five times performance is only on the daily basis, on a close to close basis. You can see over here every day, it gives you that five times of the underlying stock performance. All right. So command effect is something that you should Please understand and also take note of when you trade the DLCs. Okay, so that's something that um, please read up more about it um, on our website, dlc.sogen.com. <coughs> so you can find it over here. Uh, this is our website, dlc.sogen.com. Maybe I can just quickly share our website. Hang on. Huh? Okay, I hope you are able to see our website. So this is the, our website, dlc.sogden.com. We, uh, here you can find more information about the DLCs. Under education, you can find out about more about the compounding effect, you know, the cost and fees, etc. And also under products, you can search for the DLC that you like, like to trade. If I'm looking for uh, Alibaba DLC, for example. So these are the DLCs that you can choose from over here. All right. Okay, and also you can find out more about the US DLCs over here as well. Okay, uh, under DLC and US DLCs. All right. Okay, and um, so one thing I wanted to show you guys on the DLCs is the price matrix. So you can see our bid and ask over here on the DLCs. So you would uh, look at our bid and ask prices and then you will go into your Tiger Broker trading platform. You will key in, um, if you want to buy at this level, then you can go and key it into your Tiger Broker platform to trade it, okay? And on the price matrix, um, this is something that I think will be very helpful for everyone who trades DLCs you'll be able to see how the underlying, how the DLC movement uh, will move in relation to the underlying stock movement. Okay, so you can see over here, uh, you know, the close of the DLC versus the underlying stock movement. And then uh, for what movement in the underlying stock will generate what kind of uh, returns on the DLC and where, which, which price will it be at, right? So if, if Alibaba does move up by 7% to 121 level, the five times long, uh, five times long, Alibaba DLC will be quoting at uh, 0 0.17, 17 cents level. Uh, and they'll be marking a 35% gain from its previous close over here. Okay. So this is a price matrix that you can use uh, on an intraday basis to be able to see uh, where will the DLC price be uh, corresponding to um, where the uh, underlying stock price is. All right. So every single DLC will have a price matrix you go to search for your DLC first, for example, eight one, and then you can see over here the price matrix over here to be able to see uh, where the uh, different price ranges are for uh, on the DLC versus the underlying stock. Okay, and the last thing I wanted to show you guys also is on the markets tab. So this is quite an interesting uh, area where you can find more insights. Uh, so over the last five training days, you can see over here what are the fund flows been like over here, right? 
so one of the top few farm shows is Alibaba, UOB, Meituan, and Tencent on the five times long DLC. All right, so it has been quite a bit of inflows into the long side uh, in the past five trading days. So you can have an idea of, you know, um, what are people buying in a sense? Are they buying the long DLC and which underlying is it? Or are they buying the short DLCs, right? For example. Okay, and also we wanted to share more information about the fund flows on the underlying stock itself. Um, you know, just now, I think we, I mentioned that one of the top gainers uh, in the month of March on the Singapore shelf was Wilma. And <clears throat> you can see over here for the last three weeks, yeah, indeed on the Insti front, Wilma was the top net uh, fund flows, net buy of 62 million on the Singapore stock market. So I know this one, this price information is information is uh, provided by SGX uh, on their website in the, in the Excel file. Uh, what we have mainly done is to try and help you to collate it together and able to see it nicely. You can choose your underlying stock as well on the C, uh, OCBC. What has the trend been like uh, on the price as well as the fund flows for both net retail and net in steep fund flow, all right? So Wilma Insti was buying in the last three weeks as opposed to retail. Retail was selling Wilma in the last three weeks, right? So you can easily see the fund flows on the Singapore stocks over here. And you can also see the Southbound Stock Connect flows over here. Uh, the top 10 most traded stocks on the Southbound Hong Kong uh, sort of uh, China Stock Connect. Okay, you can choose your underlines as well. So this is a very useful tab that um, I hope that you guys can make use of to see where are the fund flows of the DLCs, but also for the underlying stock itself. All right, so um, this is our a very quick, just uh, sharing on our on our website, uh, dlc.socgen.com. Uh, come here and then you can, you know, find out more information about DLCs under the education tab. You can search for the DLCs under the products tab and you can get more insights into the uh, DLC flows and the market flows. Uh, over here on the market tab. And most importantly, um, you can also see our web, our hotline over here, 6226-2828. So if you have any questions at all, today is a one hour session, so I can't really go on too much about the DLCs and to share with you, uh, you know, stuff like, uh, you know, the sensitivity or the spread, etc. But if you have any questions at all uh, on the DLC, please do give our hotline a call. Uh, my team and I, we are on standby uh, during SGX market hours to be able to answer your calls and answer any questions that you have on the DLCs. Uh, so any feedback, any questions that you have at all, even if you have feedback about this webinar sessions, how you want to improve it, uh, please uh, do drop us a call and my team and I will be there to pick up the call. You, if you don't want to call us, you can also uh, drop us a note over here um, with this form. You can uh, write in to us um, and share with us any questions or feedback that you have on the DLCs. All right. So um, that's a very quick one. Um, right now it's exactly 8.30 p.m. So I want to be on time. I don't want to take up uh, too much of your time. Uh, but please do explore our website, dlc.songjen.com. And hopefully that you will find it useful. And hopefully you will also uh, be able to get the information that you need on the DLCs uh, from our website. All right. So that's all I have for this sharing session in March. Um, perhaps in April, if April is not so much of a very exciting month, as much has been, uh, maybe I can do a full hour, one hour on, you know, how to pick the right DLCs um, and also go in depth into more of the DLC features, uh, compounding effect, you know, the airbag mechanism. Um, hopefully I can have a chance to do that uh, in the next session. All right. Thank you everyone for tuning in.